we're out here back working on the pf2 build today so yesterday we got the engine in got the clutch cable bracket fabbed up flipped her around to work so it doesn't hit the bolt on that motor mount and I got a few parts in from T-Bolt USA my buddies at T-Bolt USA shipped me out a few things came in in like two days yeah two days so I got this fast 50s or sick 50s bar pad not sure whether or not I want to do the fast 50s or the six fi sick 50s but um you know you can let me know what you guys think I like them both I like the American flag but I don't like how when you got the American flag one on you got the yellow right here so that's why I kinda like the black maybe I'll just put tape over this and then run this one that's my OCD for you right there most people probably wouldn't bother them but anyway so T-Bolt sent me that stuff I got a couple oil cooler lines that I'm gonna use I haven't got the oil cooler in yet I have to go see my buddy Sean the one I built the 160 TX for and uh, then I'll get the oil cooler and then hook those up I'll be able to fabricate some sort of mount maybe I'll drill and tap these holes right here and then fab up a mount but like I was saying I need, I need the oil cooler before I can uh, do that but well, what I did since the last video real quick before I started this video was put on the BBR Kickstarter so to make this fit the YX 140 motor what you have to do is file down this area right here because it comes in contact with that area on the case so once you do that it's able to shut enough it still hits the case like right there and then down at the bottom there a little bit but at least it's further over and the stock one that came with it the one that just goes straight up and over I was having problems with it hitting right here as soon as I went to push it down once it hit right there and I had to pull it back up to, and it scratched it so this one as you can see it doesn't even come close so that should be perfect like that and then if anyone noticed see little things I noticed little things like this but this was black before it said SSR in black I just got rid of the paint that was in there I feel like it looks much cleaner like that anyway yeah so the reason why I was thinking of going from the nice beefy front tire to the stock you know 60 what is it 6100 yeah 6100 and this is the 8100 so it's a lot wider uh, so I was thinking about going to this size right here hoping that it's not as tall because right now the way the bike sits it's a little bit choppered out a little high in the front and if you see I have the fork tubes all the way down too and it's still sitting like that so I might switch that out but in today's video what we're gonna try to tackle is the intake manifold I'm gonna weld this up and I put this on just to see make sure I have space when I actually put the carburetor with the intake manifold on but we'll go ahead and take off the gas tank so we can actually see in there and then on the bench over here I have the nibby carb so initially I told you guys I was gonna use the Makuni VM26 but unfortunately she's so big and if I run it like this the plunger ends up hitting the side spar on the frame and I can't get to the air screw or the idle screw so we're not going to end up using that carburetor this one will work out better because you see the air, uh, idle screw and air screw is on opposite side I can get to that side and then um, the plunger goes up instead of out so this one's going to work better for this application here and it's still going to be really tight I'll try to show you ready so like that's basically how that's going to want to be right there and then there it's super close if you can see the exhaust but I can't it's hard to see in there but it's got a little bit of space but not as much as I would like so I already marked it a little bit but let's go ahead and pull off the gas tank we got the gas tank off you can see in here a little bit better but everything is just gonna be so close together regardless and um, then like I said this carburetor I'm able to reach under here and then hit the plunger the gas line will work out good on that side and then if we come around here I can get to the air screw it's gonna be right in there and then obviously the 
idle screw right there. So that's why I ultimately chose to go with the Nibby instead of the Makuni. I marked out the intake manifold right there. So let's see if I can hold it in the right spot and then show you the amount of space that we're basically going to have. So we're going to have just enough space. And I'll probably just heat wrap the header on that spot, like right there. Heat wrap that section, or just probably heat wrap the whole thing just to the end. And then it shouldn't have a problem with burning the air filter. It just kind of sucks how all the heat is right here, and then it's going to go right into the carburetor. Like on the MM12P, I ended up turning the intake manifold around, and now the carburetors living right here instead of up underneath there because I was having the same problem with this bike with the perimeter frame the air filter would just hit right on this part of the perimeter frame so it wouldn't work and the air filter would end up tearing so that's why we went ahead and moved it in front now the air filter is right here and it doesn't suck up any hot air off the exhaust pipe So let's go ahead and pull this off. I'm going to take that off, maybe do one more mark, clean it up, put it on the bench, and we'll do some tack welds, and then we'll put it in place and then see how it works. I just got the intake manifold all cleaned up, filed down the edges, made sure it was nice and flush, so that way when I fit it together, here's the front, I'm going to use that line, look at that. Fresh off the welder, still a little hot. That will do. Hard to see it, but just do a little tack on there, and then a little one on that side. I think it should be good. So let's go ahead and put this on the bike and see how it works. Also port matched both sides to the carburetor and then to the head. It's got an optimal flow. That's how she's gonna be living in there, boys. Check it out. So we got clearance on that side. Got plenty on that side. Let's see if we can show you the, oh yeah, perfect view, look at that. So we got space right there. So this type of filter, I wonder if anyone knows of another filter that's smaller than this one, like the roundness of it, it'd be perfect because this one a little bit wider right here. So if it was the same diameter all the way around, it'd be mint. So this one is like, uh, I forget what angle it is, but it's a little bit of an angle. So to get it just like that, and it's only pressing up against there a tiny bit, as you can see right here it's not touching so that's good but that's like as good as it's gonna get right there I'm glad it was one and done so now I'll take it back off run a nice bead all the way around the side then we should be good to go but see what I mean you can get to that screw right there with the Makuni carburetor I wasn't gonna be able to get to it so this is definitely the best move and I can still reach under here like this and adjust that if I need to the idle screw so I'm pretty happy guys, uh, not too bad, everything else has kind of been a struggle with this thing, always something running into something that has to be customized, you think it's just going to go in and then turns out something needs to be customized, like always, but I enjoy doing it because it makes it that much more worth it in the end once I'm out ripping it. Hope you guys enjoy watching the stuff that I've been doing lately, a lot of custom stuff, I've been trying to get as many videos out as I could for you guys, so there's plenty of content. So let's pull this thing off now. I got it mocked up on there. Everything is looking good. I mean, look how much space we have there. Just worked out perfect. I'm going to pull this thing back on the bench, get it welded up, and we'll put it on once and for all. Weld this thing up once and for all.
Good enough, right? Oh! It's all bolted on. It got some nice hardware on there. Added the little heat spacer just to lift it up that much more right here. See how it was close before, so that's perfect. And then it'll separate some of the heat from heating up into this, you know, soaking into the intake manifold. And put this carb over here. I was just checking out that one for a second, but yeah, there it is, guys. Not too bad, huh? Got room for the air screw. We got room for the idle screw. And then we got, got our space in between there. So I'm pretty happy. The only thing I got to do now is get a throttle cable and a few other little odds and ends. And then we'll fire this thing up, but we're getting closer. Thanks for staying tuned and watching the videos. I think that's going to be it for tonight. I'm beat. Just was welding that thing up, cutting grind. It's like 12 o'clock again. I think what's going to take like 10 minutes ends up taking like 3 hours. So tomorrow we'll do the wiring. And finish it up. Uh, I already put the jets in there. I think I got like a 32. What I do? 32 110. But yeah, that's what we got going on, guys. Thanks for watching. As always, don't forget to like this video. Maybe share it with a friend that's into pit bikes. And consider subscribing if you're watching and you're not already subscribed.